This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Likeable Science is all about how science is a vital and dynamic and interesting part of everyone's life. It's uh, not something just done by scientists, just done in laboratories. And we're going to talk today with uh, Kevin Gooding, who's here. Welcome, Kevin. Nice Thank to have you back. Thank you. Kevin's been on the show a couple times before, and we've talked about various different things. Um, he's recently sort of uh, switched his, his life around a little bit and is working now as a senior hydrologist uh, and operations manager for Intera. Right? Did I get it right? Yes, Intera. And Intera, I guess, is a, is a sort of a geoscience company in the broader sense. But you, uh, being a hydrologist, really are looking at their water issues, right? Yes, I'm a hydrogeologist, and I'm working on water issues throughout Hawaii. Okay. And so, uh, in particular, you, you would give me some uh, fa fancy title about groundwater use reporting outreach field verification and compliance on Maui and Molokai. As a, the title for what you wanted to, to talk about, and which sounds pretty pretty complicated, but can you maybe tell us briefly sort of what that's all about? Well, it does summarize <laughs> where's the water uh -huh. or where's the wells, because uh -huh. uh, that's kind of what I'm doing, doing both, looking uh -huh. for the water and the wells. Uh -huh. um, the Water Commission collects water use data throughout the state for both ground and surface water, uh -huh. and throughout the years, well, let's say let's go back in the past. A long, not all that long ago, let's say just the 70s, on this island, there was probably three major categories of users, plantations, the Board of Water Supply, and the military. Mm -hmm. If you got those covered, plus a few others, you pretty much know how much water is being used. Mm -hmm. But now, the plantations have all sold out, right. and there's multiple users on. We still have the other two. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the Water Commission has been actively trying to collect water use data. Okay. And maybe about six years ago, they came up with an um, online reporting system. Mm -hmm. Before that, if a thousand people had reported their water use, they would have gotten a thousand sheets of paper. Hmm. And, so uh, they would have had to look at all those and transcribe them. And, exactly. Yeah. But now they have an online system. Mm -hmm. which goes directly into their database after a quick filtering process. Mm -hmm. And so they're actively trying to uh, get everyone to report their water use. Mm -hmm. So we can understand, all of us, not just them, understand the water, what's happening with the water. Right, because water, and people sometimes don't think of it this way, but, but that is sort of the one thing we truly can measure accurately, right? How much water we're pumping out, how much water we're using actively, right? Yeah. And that's really the only thing we can tell with a high degree of accuracy. I mean, there's rainfall, and you can make estimates about how many gallons have fallen over what period of time, but it's just really, I guess, Again, even vaguer guess about how much water is sort of sitting in the ground at any given time, and probably even still a wilder guess about how much water may be flowing out. That uh, makes it down to the groundwater. Right, yeah. it goes into the groundwater and flows out in the ocean. And people so, are constantly working on that. Right, but, uh, but those are all unknown. So what, what you're looking at is that one known piece, right? That we the can one look, known piece, right. yeah. Which, well, it's not by any means a whole picture. It, it can tell us a lot, right? It tells us a lot because it's... But like you said, it's the one thing we can know, and it reduces the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of small and, and slightly larger water studies. Mm -hmm. And if you see a well, a big well, and there's no information, you don't know if they're pumping 10 million gallons a day out of it, or if it has been inactive for 10 years. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so if you're trying to make a conceptual or, a, or, an, or an actual numerical model of a, of a particular groundwater flow system, it's a guess, right. and it's uncertainty. If you just have a whole area, you don't know what's happening. Right, and in, indeed, uh, many of the, the sort of models of, of where our groundwater is on, on all of the Hawaiian islands and how much water there is, these are very, a lot of them are decades and decades old, 60, 70 years old, right? And are pretty crude models, basically. Somebody looked at the hills and said, well, they're this big, and therefore they got that much water in them, right? Yeah, I mean, they're based on... <laughs> Conceptual models, right. which are kind of pictures and stories about, that were developed, not stories, but I mean technical descriptions, right. that were developed a long time ago, many times in the 40s or so. Right. And uh, they bring some updates. Right. Don Thomas at UH Hilo is working hard on updating deeper flow systems that weren't known about in the 40s. That's right. I, I gather on the Big Island they recently went through some saltwater 
and through some impermeable rock and then found a whole other supply of fresh water down below that, but nobody had a clue it was going to be there. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing, the internal structure of the volcanoes, the extinct volcanoes or the active volcanoes that are around here is very complicated, right, with impermeable rock, permeable rock, broken up things, cracks, slabs, turned upside down, you know, yeah. And Much more complicated than we uh, once thought. Right, and therefore there are pockets of water here, and pockets of water there, and other places let the water drain out very quickly, and yeah, and it's very tricky to know, because all that's buried, in some cases, thousands of feet down, right? Yeah, yeah, sometimes there's several thousand. <laughs> right. And therefore, getting back to this. Back to our issue. The, the, the wells are, are nice things. Somebody's pulling out you know, a million gallons at, over a given time period versus half a million gallons versus 10 million gallons over that same time period. You can make some sense out of that data, particularly if you have, combine it with other data, right? Yes. I should start out to how I've, this started. I mean, I'm sure. a consultant. In mm -hmm. the, the State Water Commission, the Commission on Water Resource Management, mm -hmm. is, is, is funding and doing this project. Mm -hmm. And so I'm doing Maui County, okay. which is a, what, not Lanai, but Molokai and Maui. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, maybe there's about 850 wells on Maui, okay. and about 500 aren't reporting their water use. Right. Yeah. So I'm chasing those 500. So actually, let's pause there and let's start running. We've got a couple pictures because we'll catch oh, up yeah. after about one or two images. So the first, I think the first image is just sort of, yeah, that was just sort of your title slide for, for what we're doing here, right? Where is the water? Where is the water? Yeah. Chasing water, yeah. This is, is important. The next slide, I think, t talks briefly about what Intera is and who Intera is. I'm, I mentioned a little bit of that, but you might want to say a few words about this. Oh, yeah, we're a um, geosciences company based out of Austin, Texas. I run the Hawaii office. I'm from Hawaii. And they recruited me here. My office is in Kailua. We do um, water resources, environmental, um, coastal, and waste isolation work, waste management. In Hawaii, it's primary, primarily water resources. Sure. And then I think the next picture gets onto the maps, right? Okay, that's, there's your map on Molokai, right? Oh yeah, well to start out with these maps, right. that's a good idea. Because you were talking about how many wells were in there. So. Well, there's about 180 wells on Molokai total. Okay. And kind of the, and I'm, 137 weren't reporting. Okay, out of 137 weren't reporting. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's, again, somebody, the Board of Water Supply wants to know, that's where the majority of these wells, yeah. you know, how much water is coming out of them, right, over what period of time. What's coming out of them, and it's, um, right. it's kind of a reflection of Molokai. They're very friendly people, but they're also very private. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be... They don't want other people to be knowing their right. business. And, and then Maui, on the next slide, uh, has even more wells, right? 850 total. Right. And, then, and I'm doing about 500. Okay. Although word is getting out ahead of me. <laughs> Once people start reporting and they're hearing about it, mm -hmm. then I don't need to uh, go bother them. I see. <laughs> so. And probably about a dozen have. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's a big success. Okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> and are you seeing about the same rate of non-reports, or you know, you said 137 out of your 150 on Molokai weren't reporting. Is it the vast majority on Maui not reporting, or? Oh, I kind of don't recall the percents. I think uh, a smaller percentage okay. of Maui is not reporting. Okay. So um, many of the Molokai wells are are old dug wells. Oh, hand dug wells. If we went back to that picture, the Molokai picture, um, a lot of the whole south coast is triangles, green triangles. Oh, right. Those are all dug wells. Okay. Many of them old. Right. With, I mean, that we don't really have an age in the database, but they might be um, very old, pre-contact and native, huh. a uh, couple hundred years old, and then have been gradually redeveloped and fixed. Mm -hmm. And a lot are filled, essentially forgotten. Mm -hmm. or they're kind of salty and they just fell out of use right. as the um, Department of Water brought in service. So it's hunting down those and of course the people don't report for them because um, they're essentially not wells to them. Right. They're just some hole in the ground in the backyard. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so, um, right, but, but people, uh, the, the, the powers that be really want to know this for, I mean, one, they, they have a vested interest in just knowing about what's going on in terms of how much water is being pulled out, right? Because there is data, too, showing that some wells in some places, particularly near the coasts, are 
uh, getting higher and higher chloride levels, and that is, they're getting salt in that water a little bit from over pumping in the region. There is in, in many places. Right. And so clearly that's very important data to have, right? Because at some point you really don't, you don't want to keep pumping and getting your water. To, saltier and saltier right, and people need to cut back and they'll, they'll need to essentially come down. To, they have to share with each other. Right, right. They might all need to cut back and not use as much right. to maintain the resource. And, and that gets us actually to, to an interesting point, right? In that Hawaii actually has, I believe that they have water, sort of general water right statements in their co state constitution. As I understand it, I think they're the only state that actually put, put that in. We, I don't know if we're the only, but uh, we definitely have it. It's mm -hmm. called the public trust doctrine, okay. which basically means water and other natural resources are held in trust by the state of Hawaii for the use of the citizens of mm -hmm. the state. Okay. So it means we all, we all own the water jointly. We all own the water jointly. Right. And which means you can't use more than your share and I can't use more than my share, right? Yes, <laughs> and you have to use it uh, reasonably. Right, right. But of course, that's uh, that's the judgment. Oh, right. <laughs> so it's open to interpretation. Yeah. What, what your share is, what my share is, and what, what what's what the reasonable use is, right? And people can make very good arguments. Is it reasonable to use all of that water for agriculture? That seemed like a sensible thing to do back in earlier days, right? That people used a whole lot of water and, and lowered the water table here on on uh, Oahu significantly. I gather up in the hills uh, by draining off gazillions of gallons and irrigating pineapple and sugarcane fields and all, right? Well, between, I, between the Constitution, the legislator, and perhaps others, they've come up with public trust uses. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are, I should be able to name them, domestic, mm -hmm. um, Department of Hawaiian, Hawaiian Homelands, mm -hmm. traditional and customary Native Hawaiian uses, mm -hmm. and um, natural uses. Okay. You can call them in-stream or maintain natural systems. Excellent. And those are the public trust uses that are top tier. Cool. I'll tell you what, I'm going I'm to stop you there. Uh, we're going to explore that a little further when we come back. But right now I'm told we need to take a break. Uh, Kevin Gooding is from Intera is here with me. I'm Ethan Allen. I'm your host on Likeable Science. And we're going to take a brief break, and then we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. It's choose to treat it with the help of a physical therapist. Physical therapists treat pain through movement and exercise. No warning labels required, and you get to actively participate in your care. Choose to improve your health without the risks of opioids. Choose physical therapy. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. And you're back here on Lakeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen, uh, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for coming back and joining us in the second half of our show. Kevin Gooding from Intera, a uh, hydrogeologist, is, is here with me. And we're talking about groundwater, uh, well uh, reporting, monitoring uh, on Molokai and Maui, particularly, which is where Kevin is, is doing his work. And, and you, right before the break, you, you were talking about uh, there are sort of enshrined, recognized uses uh, that are sort of protected uses of water, right? Including some traditional. Native and traditional, traditional I mean, and traditional and customary is, is how they refer to it. Natural systems uses, domestic consumption. And Hawaiian homelands. And Hawaiian homelands, okay. Um, was there anything sort of set aside in any sense for agriculture? Or did, they, did agriculture just sort of take over the water they needed? Um, well, just because those are top tier, let's call them, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that others, other uses aren't mm -hmm. perfectly legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's just if those interfered, right? Uh, technically, then these uh, these um, public trust uses would uh, would get first choice, right? Because what the state is concerned about, right, is they don't want to have a, a so-called tragedy of the commons, right? Where because it it belongs to everybody, everybody starts taking too much of it, and then nobody has anything at the end, right? That's right, uh, and that that would be uh, tragic, uh, un unlivable, right? I mean, we depend on our groundwater here in Hawaii. We have actually 
a tiny bit of surface water, but relatively minuscule, right? Yeah, we tend to depend more on it than most places. We have no alternatives in terms of rivers. And right. Most, most places on the mainland, of course, can just they can go somewhere else, tap into another section of a big aquifer and, and draw up more water. Big deal. It may cost them a few million dollars to do a well, but, you know, that's really for They trivial. can go 100 miles away right. or so. And right. Whereas well, we have we very limited spaces to put wells in, very limited amount. Of, I mean, it's essentially the rain that falls on these islands gives the groundwater is what, to the islands. Is our water, yeah. yes. And the islands are more or less sponges in some sense that hold X amount of water. And if we start using that faster than it's being replenished, that's not a good thing, right? Then we'll deplete the resource right. or it could salt up. Yeah. Because there's plenty of salt water right. in the lower part of the aquifer. S sitting, yeah, <laughs> sitting, sitting around, sort of, sort of waiting, and as we suck fresh water out, yeah, at some point if you suck it out, the salt water draw it up. To, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, this is, again, this is sort of complex interplay of these unknowns, right? We do know how much we're pumping out. We don't know exactly how much is in the big sponge of the island, and we don't we have some vague guess about its replenishment rate, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's why we always need more water resources data. Right. And, and uh, but clearly, I mean, one, we all need water just to live, right? You can, you know, you can live three minutes without air or three days without water and 30 days without food, right? And uh, so we don't want the taps all one day just running dry, right? We need to know what's happening and are our groundwater levels changing in some way, right? We need to know. and. And this water use uh, data collection is, is a very personal way of knowing it. Right. Really the only way is to go out and, and visit each well owner. Because mm -hmm. they don't know. That right. the, they don't know that they're required by law to report water. Right. They don't know the reasons why that it's because of what we've been talking right. about. So I, have, I, I talk with their, all 500 of them. And <laughs> but so you, there are different kinds of wells. We'll go into that in a, in a minute right there. There are drilled wells, hand dug wells, you mentioned earlier, tunnels, shafts. But how, what, what do people report to you? I mean, if you've got a big hand dug well, oh, there's my well, you know, like, big deal. <laughs> well, according, well, according to the law, they're supposed to um, have a water meter. Uh -huh. okay. But many people don't. Sure. They don't even know they had to have one. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to afford one. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I help them mm -hmm. kind of estimate their water. Okay. You know, if they have a one inch pipe, we might just use a five-gallon bucket and measure it, okay. <laughs> try to get how much. And they say, oh, I use it one hour a day, and then we can kind of figure out. Okay, so sort of back of the envelope calculations, but again. Better, better than, than nothing, nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And other people do have uh, uh, flow meters on them and can tell you precisely how much. Uh, and I expect in a few years uh, they'll all be set up so that flow meter data on a regular basis is fed automatically back, so they don't, they don't have to worry about reporting anymore, right? <laughs> Maybe someday, yeah. <laughs> Got to hope, right? <laughs> but there's always going to be this need to, to go to the to the other users too, and and even those small hand dug wells, which aren't taking a lot of water out, presumably tell us a lot about the water, because if their numbers change over time, or the salinity of that water changes, or the level in the well changes, that again that, that gives you information about the the aquifer and the water table, right? Yeah, it gives scientists and managers an idea of what's happening in case they need it. Right. And yeah, uh, other than that, you know, we're sort of running by guess and by gosh in our water. That, that's a little unnerving if you think about it, how, how it's tricky in a place like Oahu where we're building more and more big complexes that suck up a lot of water. These, I mean, hotels are a classic example, right? If they're washing all their sheets and all that kind of stuff, that's using a tremendous amount of water uh, every day for, per person, per room. It is, and, yeah. And they, you know, you really want to know the long-term trends in, in your water, in your aquifer levels, right? Long-term trends and what we can sustain. Yeah, exactly. The whole concept of sustainable yield is, is central to this whole business, right? And it'll help all these people, the hotels, right. plan plan their future. Right, right. Because you know, yeah, and help with... Uh, how much water they might have and <laughs> maybe right. how they have to change their laundry practices. Right, right. If that's the case. <laughs> and or where, if there's other areas on the islands where we should be either building instead of building here or developing their water resources and, and you know, pumping that up and, and getting ready to pipe it over here if need be or whatever, right? Yep. You know, because we get on Oahu, what, 60% of our water comes from one aquifer, the, the, the Pearl Harbor aquifer. A large is, percentage is a from Pearl Harbor. Yeah, yeah, and that's really probably 20% of the island's area or something less than that maybe even. 
So uh, it's a very small percentage, but we're getting a lot of water from this. So it's, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. But um, so, yeah, we, we really need to, uh, to move ahead on this. Um, so you say one of the things you run into is people are scared that the government will take our water, right? Yes, I've heard that a lot. Um, so, that's the first thing they'll tell me. Uh -huh. And so what do you say to them? Well, I say that um, water is, the use of water is protected. Mm -hmm. It's in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So if you it's, have your little garden and all, you know, that's a perfectly good use. If, you, if you've been established that use earlier too, particularly, that's now your, your right to keep doing that, right? And the government has no intention of taking people's right. water. Nor any right to actually take that water from you, right? Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't have the right to. And right. Uh, and of course, I tell them in my field is what I do is develop mm -hmm. water, groundwater. Right. And so I very much believe in using it, We're using it reasonably, of course. But right. Not. Right. That's that's of course the difference is particularly on in areas where water is scarce. Is it reasonable to go and build a golf course and, and want to dump billions of gallons out to keep grass green so people can knock golf balls around? I mean, is that a reasonable use? Yeah, well, everyone needs to yeah. think about that and, and chime in if they need to, right. because it is a heavy user of water. Right, right. I know, because uh, I did some work out on Yap and dealing with water issues, and, and there was a plan for a while for a Chinese company to come in and build a 10,000-person resort and a golf course there. And the whole island of Yap is, is I mean, all, all three of the main islands in, in our probably a quarter of the size of Oahu uh, and low. They don't, have the, they don't have the heights and therefore they're not storing nearly as much water. And it was just, you looked at that and thought, that's just insane. They're, they're, gonna, they're gonna suck that water out of their ground so fast, it'll be yeah. gone in a matter of a few years. And fortunately that plan seems to have been put on hold. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, they would need to find alternatives for the desalination <laughs> right. or I don't know what. Now there are of course new, new technologies emerging uh, to get, to, to, yeah, to get uh, to desalinate water. Uh, I mean, there's, of course, classic technologies like reverse osmosis, uh, which is expensive, basically, uh, relative to pumping out fresh water, right? Uh, of course, there's also simple things that people can do individually, like rainwater catchment systems, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can get what you know is pretty good fresh water out of the, when it's falling out of the sky, right? Uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty clean, pretty. Uh, pretty non-contaminated. Non and that's a good way of conserving in Hawaii. Right, right. and that, that means you're going to be using your tap a whole lot less if you're, if you're gathering rainwater, you know, and, and using that water instead. So, yeah, okay, good. Um, so, so what is, what is the, the future likely uh, telling? I mean, are you seeing trends in, in your, I don't know if you've been, been on this job long enough to, so you can say, hey, you know, we're seeing good trends, bad trends. Uh, Oh, in terms of water resources? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's good trends. Really? Okay. I think things are equalizing and old inequities are, are being repaired gradually. Oh, okay. A lot of his traditional and customary uses that were neglected for um, decades. And they're coming, they're, at least the opportunity to do it is coming back. Excellent. So, yeah, I know on Maui there's big issues because their agriculture sort of, some of their big agricultural areas basically have stopped being sugar cane producers or pineapple producers or whatever. Now, presumably they don't need all that water to irrigate all those crops. Can they return it now so that the stream flows can re return to what they used to be? And they are, they're right. returning, a, restoring a lot of streams. Okay, ah, that's excellent. And streams are pretty resilient actually. They'll, even after decades of low flow, they'll, they'll come back. I know uh, they recently did this in the mouth of the Colorado River and started releasing water there for the first time in probably four decades. And, and the Delta came blooming back apparently the first year they did it uh, rather strongly. They were, they were, people were very surprised uh, how, much, how much it was ready to spring back into life. Well, they're studying those streams. Uh -huh. um, East Maui, I've been working in Nahiku a lot, looking uh -huh. at wells there. And uh -huh. uh, it's rough terrain to study those streams. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 that's great. That's great to know that, that that's coming, that's uh, being able to, to uh, come back and hopefully, uh, is, but is there any sense, and do we have that data yet about, about overall uh, aquifer levels in, in Maui? Are they staying reasonably stable as far as you know? Are they filling more or are we actually, are we actually draining them out faster than they're being replenished or don't we know? Well, the major aquifer that's, that's very, very heavily pumped is Iao. Okay. under uh, Wailuku Kahului. 
Um, and it seems to be doing stable. Okay. Well, but that's the one, really, the one to watch. Okay. And they have, they need to develop water sources out of EL. Okay. In, in other places, looking, you're saying. Yeah, in other places. But there are other aquifers, as I know on Oahu, there are quite a few aquifers. I don't know what the number is here, but. There are others, yeah. Okay. But, <clears throat> yeah, again, that's, that only makes sense. You, you want multiple sources for your water just in case one aquifer gets contaminated or whatever, you know, somehow, or springs a leak, right? Starts draining, yeah. <laughs> starts draining out faster than you thought or whatever. In case of some disaster, right. especially, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, if it's pumping systems there, break down, you want other pumping systems, you, you want a redundant. That's the more likely system, one right? is yeah. pipelines. You have another place to get water. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's, that's, that's what, what we all want to have is a, is a resilient system so that we can uh, know that our water is secure because again water we can't we can't really afford to run out of it. I mean you saw that business in Cape Town uh, yes. just, just a few months ago right when Cape Town was coming down to day zero when they were essentially going to have no water and they sort of narrowly missed that I guess and they started getting some uh, very aggressive right. conservation right yeah excellent and excellent. even that they're analyzing because it it worked in some ways and didn't in others, even yeah. when it was coming to a, a day zero. There are still people out there watering their lawns, probably. Exactly, yeah. 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 <laughs> amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Um, so, what is, what, if you have something to tell your, the viewers here, what, what's, the, what's the key takeaway? The key takeaway, let's see. I think that we all need to contribute preserving our water resources. Because right, we're all water users. Therefore. Water users, and we're all water users, right. yeah. It's not just well owners. Right. And therefore, we must all be water stewards, basically, right? Water stewards, and a part of that is, is, taking, is providing data and understanding right. what's happening. And, we all, and every well owner has a component, and actually every person knows a little bit about water resources. Right. Yeah. They see things, they see streams. And they see pollution. They they see things, and I think we all need to remember that, that we're yeah. all we all play a part. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's great. We are uh, run, running the clock down on on time here, and uh, I thank you, Kevin, for being here. Kevin Gooding from Intera has been here talking about groundwater. I've I've learned a lot from from our conversation today. And thank you for inviting me. You're more than welcome. Hope you'll come back sometime and we can talk further. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here, and I hope you'll join us next week on Likeable Science. <laughs>